Welcome everybody to another mixed sauce video. My name is Paul. This is Ian. Today we're going to talk a little second half and season finale of Game of Thrones. So if you haven't got caught up yet, um, go catch up. We'll wait right here. And it's uh, a quick one. It's only this. a couple episodes. Is it only a couple episodes of oh, the whole is season? It's... Yeah, the whole season. Seven episodes. I yeah, think. if you're just starting off, chill and, and wait wait a while. But just turn this off. <laughs> yeah, but if you only have to watch the latest season, it's only seven episodes, I think. Yeah, so. it probably clocks in about nine or ten hours because a lot of the episodes were like hour and ten, hour fifteen or so. Yeah, yeah. So what'd you think? Uh, it was a weird season of Game of Thrones this year. Last season, I was it, it was like the season of the uh, the fan service. They were doing all kinds of things that the fans, I think, had always wanted. And this year, they're really flying blind. They don't have any of the guidelines of any of the books yeah. to sort of take them to the points necessary. Yeah, well, they have, I mean, they have the basics because they talk through the end with George R. R. Martin. Right. So they know... They have the ten poles of where they need to get to. Right. But I think to get to those places, I think that it they might have to go about it differently since uh, George R. R. Martin has basically unlimited time, unlimited pages to, to make these yeah. things happen where they only have a certain amount of hours on HBO to get people from place to place. Mm -hmm. A big complaint from a lot of people this season is... A lot of the uh, travel time, where the jetpacking of characters, where they're, they're Jon Snow will be in the old, three different the old wormholes. In yeah, Westeros. yeah. Jon Snow will be in three different locales in one hour, <laughs> and it's a little hard to believe. Whenever previously it would take an yeah. entire <clears throat> season to get from one corner of Westeros to the other corner. Yeah, like, and I, I saw that uh, you know David Benioff and BB Weiss have talked about the how they need to work with time and mm -hmm. you know to get from place to place and they do well, they do allow for a certain suspension of disbelief like they just put it out there that you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to pretend because it's all it's all pretend yeah yeah um that said I was pretty cool with most of the things that happened this season I was surprised that spoilers again not a lot of people died not a lot of main characters were taken off the board this year which i thought would have been a main component of the season sort of clearing the way for the final season to really push through the the finale and and really get to the end of in the heart of the story and to do that you kind of have to in this world that has so many characters you kind of have to take some villains and some heroes out of the way so that you can focus in on other people and Honestly, they really only got rid of a, a handful of uh, characters and, and none of the main characters that I thought at the beginning of the season. So well, I don't think anyone else needs to be killed at this point. No one's you no one's in the way. There's no, you know, I mean, you can kill people. Like, I don't expect Jamie to make it out alive. Um, I don't expect Cersei to make it out alive. Right. I, I would have thought that this season would have still continued to focus on the human as like the human elements of of the conflict so i would have thought that at some point someone in the danny john circe kind of triangle of conflict yeah. one of those people probably circe would have gotten eliminated this season and, and then next that season would just be just be, be yeah the night king would be the main yeah. focus point but they're still going to be juggling these two, um, these two kind of threats to well, the adds, Danny John. It uh, adds more drama this way because once you, if you take Cersei out of the mix, then it's just a straightforward, you know, humans versus White Walkers show. Right. That Game of Thrones has always been very political and manipulative, and who's stabbing who's in the back, and so I think leaving her, leaving everyone in there, just allows them to continue, like the overarching theme of what Game of Thrones is into the final season. I even thought that there were a few times where they kind of pump faked, and I thought that Jamie was going to bite it a number of times this season, yeah. and I was surprised that he didn't. I'm happy he's my favorite character on the show, but I thought that he would have either gotten 
blown away by the dragon during the Spoils of War episode, yep. or he would have been killed in the finale whenever he was trying to, essentially, it, when he was walking out on Circe and disobeying her order and <clears throat> essentially committing treason at that point. We're going to be really fucking sad when he dies. Yeah, that's going to be a He bummer. is certainly dying. If he doesn't die, I will be shocked because we've seen he's had the best character arc mm -hmm. up to this point. You know, the show's taken him from you know villain to you know square jawed hero, and the big hero moment at the end of this season is Cersei's like, "Well, yeah, I lied to everybody. We're still fucking everybody." Right, and why why won't you lie with me? Why won't you yeah. be dishonorable with me? Everybody in the realm thinks that you're a piece of shit. Why don't you continue to be a piece of shit? And he's like, well, because deep down I'm actually like an honorable knight that saved the realm. That's who I really am, even though the rest yeah. of the realm looks at me as an oath breaker, as a king slayer. But I'm actually, I'm Sir Jamie. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm a good guy. I think he's come around to seeing everything else going on around him. All the people that he's met, the people that he's gone through everything with, you know, his relationship with Tyrion, his relationship with Brienne, you know, they've all taught him valuable lessons about who he should be, who he can be. And at the end, he just kind of realizes, like, holy shit, Cersei, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> and he walks out, and you get yeah. the big hero moment. He puts on the Luke Skywalker glove. Oh, I love that. I love the that. The hand. It was yeah. fucking great. The big hero moment. He stands up to Cersei, and he dips. So It starts snowing in King's Landing. That's how you know yeah. that uh, stuff's really going down, he's man. Gonna, that winter's really here. He's going to get a real hero's death in Season 8. Man, just put a green lightsaber in his hand already. Let's do it. So, like, it, other than Jamie, I don't think, like, everyone else, like, everyone is pretty much in Danny's party at this point. You know? Yeah. Besides, you know, John and the Starks, everyone else is, like, I don't know. Like, if we don't see uh, Sansa and Arya again, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, I'm sure we'll see them. I'm sure I think they're... They, need to, they need to wrap up Arya's story, for sure. She still has open threads, but I think... Mm -hmm. Sansa's pretty much done. Yeah, her her whole arc ended with Littlefinger yeah. and her proving to the people of Winterfell and most importantly the audience that she's not the big dummy that she has been for the majority of Game of Thrones. Right. And did did you think that she was gonna try to execute Arya? Were you fooled by the yeah. way that they wrote that? Yeah, because she's been um, like Sansa's been a bitch. She's just kind of been bitchy the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being led by Littlefinger, and Littlefinger's made it this entire way on, you know, cunning and tricking people and, you know, using them to do his bidding. And I thought, you know, for sure, like, he's made it this far. He's not a dumb guy. Yeah. You know, he's got Sansa in his pocket, and it's going to work. Yeah. Um, it helped a lot that Sansa had Bran on her side, and she could just, like, play back the tape. The the game genie of yeah. Winterfell. <laughs> on all the cheat codes. But Unlimited if, lives! But if the game genie's not available, then she's... I mean, what happens then? She Does she go after Arya? I don't yeah, know why don't those know. two can't just sit down and have a regular conversation. And just be like, are you trying to kill me? Are you trying to kill me? What's going on? Like, I don't know why. Like, it made well, me so irritated when all of their dialogue together was fucking code. Yeah. Well, they've never had a really good... Bond. They've always been at each other's throats. It just happens now that one has a lot of power and one is an assassin. So, but this it, is it kind of like puts a little more edge on that. This is the end at, at this point. They've they've mm -hmm. been through so much. They've seen so many of their family members die. I mean, we're we're down to four people, four yeah. Starks now. So, like, I would I would like them to both honor honor their family and put aside all their gripes and all their inherent bitchiness and <laughs> sisterness and just be fucking cool which they eventually do yes with that's the help the f of the three-eyed game genie <laughs> <laughs> yes we finally get that uh it was while a lot of people liked seeing all the aria sansa stuff i'm i'm kind of glad that that's 
that's kind of done. And now yeah. we can kind of move forward with other threads of the story. Um, was there a big moment in this season that you really that you really liked or disliked? Oh, boy, I wish I would have prepared for such questions. Um, I, I, I really liked and was surprised by Zombie Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of a surprise. Um, yeah, I really didn't see... Like, I, I liked it, I thought it was cool, um, but and, and I really didn't see that coming. Like, I, yeah. I wasn't even... I didn't even consider it. That, you know, we've heard... We've seen the show. We've heard mm-hmm. all this talk about how, you know, what happens when the Night King rolls through town. If you're dead, you're part of his army, and mm-hmm. it should have made sense, and... Well, who uh, knew that he was an Olympic-level javelin thrower? Well... Javelinist? Jav- <laughs> Javelinist is probably as good as we're going to Is that right, get. folks? Let us know. Yeah, well, all right. The, the javelin business, come on. I mean, it was that a superpower? Was he channeling is anybody, can his, any, his kingliness? Can anybody right throw that? Like, could one of the other White Walkers have done that at any other time? Why did he wait so long? Couldn't he have just thrown it at John? I like, think it was, well, it's well, not... Um, Maybe he needs John for something. Maybe. Was he waiting? What, or, or, John or was John wasn't the big threat. The dragon was the threat. Was part of his big plan to get... Did he know somehow that John was going to bring the dragons to them so he could get an ultimate weapon to knock the wall down? Like, why were they going to Eastwatch in the first place? I thought it was going to be as stupid as they're going to Eastwatch so that they could just... Go out on the Climb sea and, <laughs> and, and go around the wall. I thought it was going to be that stupid. Well, the, well, there's a I guess there's a fan theory that um, the Night King is Bran. That's a stupid fan theory. Bran from the future or from the past? I guess. Bra- Bran. Different... I thought it was Bran goes back and becomes a variety of different Westerosi characters. Bran the Builder is supposed to be him. He also could possibly become the Night King. Who's Bran the Builder. Bran the Builder's the person who... He was the king who built the wall. Oh. So, therefore, if he built the wall, then maybe yeah. he would have magic or know-how <clears throat> to get through the wall. A lot so, of stupid theories. Who knows? I don't like it. Yeah, I, d- I don't... I think... I don't think um, he knew... I don't think the Night King knew John was bringing dragons. No. I think at the time, that was the biggest threat to his army. Mm-hmm. He had to take it out. I think he's the only one... He is the only expert javelinist in the White Walker army because his his dudes are like here's your spear here's your yeah they hand it to him he's not like Jimmy take care of the I wish, dragon I wish Jimmy we would have gotten to see Jimmy Knight White Walker throw Jimmy and Knight. just like Jimmy Knight Walker <laughs> Jimmy Knight Jimmy White Walker throw the spear and like completely miss and him just get angry and take it and throw the javelin himself maybe impale Jimmy with the javelin and then throw the javelin and Jimmy with Jimmy the and he's like oh and it's through his mouth <laughs> Sam Raimi style yeah I think it was I think getting a zombie dragon was just icing on the cake yeah, like, he, he icing needed to take, on the he cake needed to take, oh, <laughs> he, needed, he needed to take out the biggest threat that was yeah. the dragon expert javelinist that he is took care of business because whenever that whenever he has all the dead pulling the chains out of the water where do they get those ice chains man they weren't even ice chains they were regular chains yeah where did they get them uh you Jim. know i really like this show i don't want to think, <laughs> think am i rude I don't for think you? Too, I, no I, I saw this argument online like i don't want to think too hard about the handful of plot holes that pop up yeah yeah um but yeah i think they're pulling the shit i was like what the fuck are they doing is they're like some treasure under there. They oh, you like didn't know at that pirate ship the, up? the second that he got the second that they hit the dragon with the javelin. I was like, oh well, now I know how they're getting over the wall. Oh no, I'm a moron. Oh yeah, once after a couple heave hoes of yeah. the chain, then I was like, oh, oh no, and then yeah, they yeah. did it. But how fucking cool was that when the dragon? Oh out? yeah, it was really cool. Looked I awesome. Really looked it. great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. I, I've seen a lot of R.I.P. Tormund and Beric and Darien. They got out. But those, I'm pretty those, sure. I'm pretty sure they got out. Those cats are too big in the scope of the story to not have on-screen deaths. Yeah, right. You don't see them die on screen. They're not gonna just let them go off-panel. Yeah, there was a comic. Yeah, they're not gonna kill. Uh, what's his? 
uh, Thoros, Thoros of Mir? Is that the the? Uh, he's, he's he's dead. Yeah, he gets an on screen death. Oh, they're yeah. certainly gonna yeah absolutely. take care of higher rung characters on screen. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I I like that a lot. There was mm -hmm. nothing that I really didn't like. Like I really like these last two seasons. I'm all about fan service. I've really been, and I, like I don't think it's about fan service at this point. I think it's it's where the story is going, and it's a natural way to to bring the story about. Yeah. We're at a point where the the cast, the important characters has been narrowed narrowed down. It's mm -hmm. been to a certain point that we don't need uh, surprise deaths anymore. Like in the final battle, absolutely, we're gonna see a lot of deaths. But at this point in the season, it wasn't it wasn't necessary to get to where we need to go. So you know, seeing some of the fan theories play out, seeing John and Danny finally meet each other, and then meet each other, meet each other, M E A T, meet, yes. each other, <laughs> getting all that, all, like, I don't think it's fan service, I think it's just the natural progression of the story, which I really like, yeah, uh, did you have a highlight, a low light, yeah, I, I don't necessarily love the uh, plan to, well, how are we going to bring these warring factions of King's Landing, Dragonstone and Winterfell. How are we going to bring them all together? I know. We're going to go up and capture a White Walker and bring it down to King's Landing and convince Cersei of this threat. I, I, I know that we want to get them all together and we want to have this meeting or something like that, but I don't think that that's going... I, I, I don't know. Like I, I thought it was kind of silly the well, way that they did how it. How would you convince Cersei that I don't think that there. Well, there clearly isn't any really convincing Cersei yeah, to do she anything because she's going to backstab anyway. Yeah. Like you're essentially in the same spot that you were before you went up to the north and lost one of your dragons. The the cost uh, gain ratio is kind of off, and it, it just seemed like a sort of harebrained plot to me. Um, that's the only thing that I really and I didn't love sort of the standoff they're on the. The, the ice island and they're waiting and the white walkers and the whites are mm -hmm. kind of surrounding them and just kind of waiting and then they, they leave them there for it seems like days and then they attack them at some random point in the in the standoff like it, it, it just was, seemed well, it wasn't at a random point it was when they realized the ice had frozen back over enough that they could walk across it yeah yeah it just I don't I don't know it didn't I didn't love it I didn't love the 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 expedition up there I thought it was kind of silly and the not a big quest guy I like quests it just seemed like a pointless you like quest. quest love I do like I like a tribe called quest not so much a traditional fantasy quest no but um yeah it just seemed like a like sort of half baked idea to go up there in the end I think that um, it's it's a small gripe it didn't ruin the season for me and I still liked where we ended up in the grand scope of Game of Thrones. The me thing. The, the me thing. Did you like that? Was that your favorite part of this? The, yeah. The, the season? John's nice rounded <laughs> bum. Uh, the, yeah, I, was, I was fine with it. Uh, I, it took me... Are they normalizing incest? Because a lot of people are cheering for that. Whereas well, it's funny to see the subversion of a lot of folks being turned off from the jump with... Jamie and Cersei and the incest angle and that really turned a lot of people off to Game of Thrones and they didn't want to deal with it and thought it was weird but now we have millions of people fans of the show essentially cheering for a version of that well, the it's people, the same thing the people that that bailed yeah early were you know they're out they yeah. didn't come back the people that stayed were pro incest were they now, pro this is even, incest this or were is they even a more acceptable version of incest because it's an aunt and nephew? It's, it's not brother and sister. It, Sorry. It also it's it's surprise incest. They, they were they were They don't even know. They were unknowingly wrapped. It it's was just Skywalker pure, incest. It's pure love. I I'm I I'm fine with it, whatever. I, I but I wanna see I wanna see the reactions when someone's like, Hey, you're not gonna believe <laughs> You guys are related. What? I don't want that to happen on off screen. Like I want to see it on screen, but I don't know why 
Tyrion seemed to be so bent upset or weird yeah. about it. Like, yeah, I don't understand that either. Uh, I I mean, I guess... I guess he, he, does he know? I guess he doesn't know. I guess he could... The way I took it is that he is maybe not thrilled that his role as and his the the advice that he is going to be giving her could possibly be undermined by somebody else. That said, he has a pretty solid affection for Jon Snow. He vouched for Jon Snow. He likes this dude. Yeah. So and it I don't think weird. it's a I don't think it's like a, a butthurt Jorah moment where he's just mad someone's banging his girl. Yeah. Like I don't think Tyrion <clears throat> likes Danny like that. Yeah, and it like Tyrion's been so great. I don't want <clears throat> Tyrion to go back. And I guess Tyrion was never like a smarmy bad guy, but I don't want him to like. You, there's the scene with him and Varys this season where they're talking about how like people still need guiding, mm -hmm. and they need guided in certain ways. You know, yeah. you know, you need to do some things to get them to where the greater good needs them to go and you know those things are unacceptable and sometimes you need to do it and like i i didn't like seeing Tyrion in a negative light yeah like i think that. they could have wrapped the season without that last moment of oh i wonder what's going to happen next season with it i we didn't need that speculation there was enough heavy plot points being dropped on us in that moment that there didn't need to be an extra little push um, yeah. I think that's silly. I what I want to see is I I wonder what's going to um, sort of upset the apple cart more. Is it the fact that John and Danny are related and they're boning each other, or that John, the way that he is related to her, makes him the heir to the Iron Throne? Like which is going to cause the most tension? I would expect John to not want it into like i mean he's been mm -hmm. he's been a stark he's been loyal to the north like this whole <clears throat> this whole season he's i love the north i love the north i'm loyal to the north like this is i the people of the north need to like me i need to be here for the people of the north like yeah. he's so he's such a stark right that you know no matter like what his bloodline is i think that's where that's where he he wants to be i don't think he's gonna put up any kind of a fight if daenerys is like this is my throne, motherfucker. Yeah. He I did all of this. I worked this hard to get here, and you're just going to hop up there because you're a guy? Yeah, he he mm. and he really doesn't want it. That's why, in the end, I think Jon Snow is going to sit on the Iron Throne because he's the one character that really doesn't want it. Yeah, but he's also not the best candidate for it. Well, you know, I mean... Like, that... Daenerys wants it, and she has, you know, the good intentions for it. Well, I think Sansa some of some it. of like, her some of her intentions are getting twisted. They're doing a lot of Mad Queen stuff with her. They're playing up some of that stuff. Yeah. The the Tarleys with uh, Randall and and Dickon yeah. Tarley getting burned in their suits of armor. I mean, that's no accident that they did that like that. That's a direct callback to the Mad King burning the Starks in their armor. Right. So. They're at least laying some of the groundwork that Danny is a bit too power hungry. She talks a lot about this is my birthright and I've earned it and I fought for it and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And <clears throat> George R. R. Martin doesn't really reward characters that do that, no matter how hard we're rooting for them. So. Well, he also doesn't reward the noble characters either. I mean, John Snow no, he is Ned Junior, the noblest of nobility, and that doesn't get rewarded. So true. But John's been brought back from the dead, maybe possibly learning some of those lessons. Like, I know that he says, I know you're going to say that I'm doing just what my father did and blah, 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 blah. But I think on, on some level, we got to see John not be rewarded for doing yeah. sort of <clears throat> over-the-top noble things. And he was stabbed to death by his own men for it. Boy, is fandom going to be furious when... Daenerys goes bad in season eight. People are going to be mad. I mean, they legitimately are laying the seeds that if they wanted to make that turn, it wouldn't be preposterous. So, I don't know. It could happen. <clears throat> when the social justice warriors, strong, upstanding, clean, the, the woman of women, 
goes bad and it and John's you know king white guy on the throne it's gonna be there will be riots in the street it's gonna be a dark day whenever uh, she's the mad queen and Ray is a Sith Lord <laughs> I don't know I, I honestly think they're they're hyping up her like mad queenness but like something this season like she'll they'll bring her back there if she's like mm-hmm. she's got to be the, the queen she's got to sit on the throne John goes back up north like I mean, we've already proved tonight that I didn't see that zombie dragon bullshit coming. So, I clearly have no, <laughs> I clearly have no idea. But that seems that seems like the right, that seems the way this should go. Um, if she is the Mad Queen and Ray is the bad guy in the rest of these Star Wars movies, I mean, shit. <laughs> didn't yeah, see what, that. didn't see what? that coming. And then uh, the Justice League in the second movie, they're fighting no other than Wonder Woman. Oh, no. (laughs) I think that's going to wrap it up uh, for our silliness tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Um, My name is Paul. Ian Sharpley. And you can find us at McSauss, M-C-S-O-S-S. We are on Twitter, Instagram. Here on YouTube. We are on Facebook. and um, All the socials. All the socials. So... Check us out, uh, drop us a line, tell us what you think, and we'll see you next time.